Welcome to Evening Prayer, coming to you from St. Augustine's Chapel at uh, St. Monica's. Uh, just in case you don't know who I am, I'm Rob Kosh, and I'm the fairly new chaplain here. Today is a special day in the church's calendar. It's the feast of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And I'll say a little bit more about those in a while. You'll be able to follow the order of service uh, on the sheet which uh, I've emailed across. The Lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Now in a few moments of silence, let's just recall the day and reflect the good things and the bad things. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Amen. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Even darkness is no darkness with you, the night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light you, to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. 
Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written. As day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. The scripture reading is from 1 Peter. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend your, my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. So, as I said at the beginning, today is the feast of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And some of you may be scratching your heads because it was only last week that we celebrated Mary Magdalene. There's a common confusion in the church. It's happened all down the centuries. Who is this Mary who was the sister of Martha? Well, the fact is that she wasn't Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was an entirely different person. Mary Magdalene was the one who uh, was healed of, of demons. Mary Magdalene was the one who stood at the foot of the cross. Mary Magdalene was the one who met our Lord on Easter morning and mistook him for the gardener. This Mary and Martha and Lazarus were very good friends of Jesus. Uh, and there are at least two occasions recorded in the gospel where they eat together. One after Lazarus's miraculous resurrection, which we remember Jesus wept at the tomb for his friend. But the other one was the occasion when Jesus went for, uh, for a party. And uh, Martha, of course, we know, was busy cooking and getting everything ready. And she was a bit miffed with Mary because Mary sat there listening to Jesus. My son used to have a T-shirt which said, Jesus is coming, look busy. And I suppose the question I want to ask you is, if Jesus was coming to supper with you tonight, what would you do? Would you give him what you'd prepared? Or would you uh, dig around in the fridge and perhaps find a bit more? Or would you rush down to Waitrose, of course Waitrose, BS9, uh, and, um, and find a filet million for him? Whatever you did, Jesus would ask you to listen. Now, there are, I think, in life, two types of people. Those who rush around and do an awful lot, and those who reflect an awful lot. Jesus said that Mary had taken the better part by reflecting. But the truth is that if Martha had done it the self-same thing, Jesus wouldn't have got dinner. And so it seems to me that in our lives, we have to be able to find a balance. A balance where we can reach out and do things for other people, 
and get the chores done, of course, but also that we spend some time listening to Christ. I don't know what your prayer life is like, and it would be um, impertinent of me to presume. But so often in our prayer lives, they do become rather rapid lists of things that we want God to sort out. Sick people, the cares of the world, all sorts of things. But perhaps at the very heart of prayer, there has to be silence. There has to be that deep stillness where all our rushing around can stop and we can really hear God. So in your prayers, I'd exhort you to spend some time in silence. Mary may have taken the better part, but it's also the more difficult part sometimes because it's easier to rush around and look busy than it is to be still and know God. And now we say together the Nunc Dimittis. Grant us your light, O good Lord, that the darkness of our hearts being overcome, we may receive the true light, even Christ our Saviour. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Grant us your light, O Lord, that the darkness of our hearts being overcome, we may receive the true light even Christ, our Saviour. Let us pray. And in the stillness of the moment, let us open our hearts and listen to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us hold before God those who we are concerned for, friends and family, members of the parish, members of this community here at St. Monica, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering, for any who are suffering from the coronavirus, for any in ICUs, for any who are a pain or afraid, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those on holiday at this time, particularly those who are concerned because they will have to quarantine when they come home.
We pray also tonight for NHS workers, doctors, nurses, and all those who support them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died, praying for any who have died in the last 24 hours, for any who have died a violent death or a sudden death, for any who have died unprepared or without knowing the love of our Lord Jesus. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. God our Father, whose Son enjoyed the love of his friends Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, in learning, argument, and hospitality. May we so rejoice in your love that the world may come to know the depths of your wisdom, the wonder of your compassion, and your power to bring life out of death. Through the merits of Jesus Christ, our friend and brother, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May God bless us that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.